All right, so I've got a 3v3 here, and uh, this goes very well for us. <laughs> yeah, so it's me, Nopen Lemon again, classic, um, USF, Nopen on Soviets, Lemon on uh, Brits. Now, Lemon doesn't have a good game because about halfway through, his internet almost cuts out, so he he's basically lagging for half the game, and he almost disconnects on a couple of occasions. So, uh, yeah, but uh, it's okay because whatever he manages to put out before he starts having like major internet issues, uh, all those units come into play, and so long as they're present and get shot at, that's that helps me and nope out. So, what what I like about this. Uh, this game here is that it sort of illustrates what I'm an advocate for, just like maneuver warfare. And the whole a aspect of maneuver warfare is to fight the enemy's mind, right? It's all psychological for the most part. You're trying to confuse and disorientate the enemy. And if you can do it well, you can demoralize him and then he'll just leave. We can win without fighting. And in this case here, we managed to force one Wehrmacht guy to drop. Uh, our opponents here are... Long, um, it's the fog of war. There we go. Yeah, so our opponents are two Wehrmacht, one OKW. We force the two Wehrmacht guys to drop, and after that, it's just, you know, it's game over, basically, once there's one AI in the in play. So, <clears throat> yeah. Now, as we start off here, I haven't actually decided on a strategy yet. I haven't decided what commander to go either. So, I'm just going off through right here. So on this map here, this is the cutoff point for the fuel on this side here on the right. On the left side, this is the cutoff point, right? So if we want to pressure their fuel, which is this one here, we go for this. We don't necessarily need to go in and cap. And as I said before, it's more important to, to win the engagement than to focus on capturing the points. Because if you can win the engagement, then you have all the time to cap the points. New infantry section is ready for battle. So I'm deciding, you know, figuring out what to do. I'm just opening up with the rear echelon. So send the rear echelons up first and keep them on the outside exterior so that I can spot whether or not there's going to be MGs and uh, Storm Pioneers. These are the two units that, for the early game, need to, um, need to look out for. So what happens here is that um, about 10 seconds ago, Lemon says push. We're going to rush these guys. We're going to rush this point right here. So, me and uh, Nope, I just go in for it. So I immediately lock in Armor Company when he uh, says so, that we should rush them. And uh, basically, we're just focusing on this one cutoff point. So I got the Assault Engineers running. I'm going to bring in another one soon. Keep the rear echelons out on the exterior and spot the MG here. So this guy is spamming MGs, but it uh, doesn't help him out. He also ends up getting bunkers. But we have more than enough force here to to collapse this flank. I mean, the rest of his units are all out of position. We don't actually see this MG. Well, at least at the time of playing, I didn't know about this MG. I'm not sure if Nope saw it. But uh, as I said before, we don't have any comms, so there's no time for anybody to type out that we've got problems here. But it doesn't matter. We wipe out the MG. Nope steals it. Very good. I'm just at this point, knowing that we've collapsed this flank and we're uh, on a two-on-one. That means Lemon on the other side here uh, is on is in a two-on-one basically. Although the blue player is playing quite passively, uh, it gives Lemon a chance to repel some of uh, Cyan players' uh, units. But at the cost of being passive, he's uh, he's oblivious to what's going on behind his lines basically. Yellow player is trying to chase me with his MG. It's uh, it's not really a good idea. So at this point, I'm saying to myself, you know, time is of the essence. I've got to push over here and um, salvage something on this flank because we've managed to wipe out this flank for the most part. Lemons on a two on one. We need a stabilized situation. And uh, yeah, we kind of do. Get a couple of wipes here and there. Cyan player isn't doing too well. So I'm busy trying to like micro this. I've left some of my units out. The echelons here, and we're doing nothing. Uh, call in with the assault engineers. Get lucky, didn't get caught by that MG. Didn't have line of sight. 
And what we're gonna see here is that I'm gonna start floating a lot of manpower because <laughs> I'm like completely focused on trying to make sure we keep the initiative here that I'm not pulling in any more units. And since we wiped out a lot of the enemy units, uh, I don't run into a trouble where I'm outnumbered in terms of infantry. So it doesn't occur to me that I'm floating a lot of manpower. I need to keep track of that next time. So, yellow player, not entirely sure what he's trying to accomplish, but uh, he's, he's, he's not doing too well. He's not helping his teammates out. Cyan player has been punished a lot, he's lost quite a lot. Blue is still being passive. Uh, it doesn't mean that he's not a threat, because by being passive, he still kept his infantry alive. And in terms of manpower, I mean, he's doing alright. Until he gets a disengagement, of course. <laughs> Get a wipe here, I think. Yeah. Our brave infantry is dying. Hell. Uh, I believe this also cuts off the point. I have a look at the tech. Yeah, it does also. Yeah. So there's technically two cutoff points on this planet. That's interesting. I, I didn't know that. So Lemon is regrouped, repelling the uh, Cyan player here with his uh, Vox Grenadiers. Oh, Nope seems to have taken some uh, No, Nope, come on man, you gotta, you gotta put out more, but uh, you know, I'm not blaming him because both of us have been uh, blitzing the enemy. We haven't had time to, to um, assess the situation and uh, figure out what we want in our uh, composition. So, Lemon tells me there's a bunker over here, so I go over and assault the engineers to get the uh, demo charge, so I eliminate that, so we can capture the fuel easily here. So they're taking the time to re-establish the lines here. I don't know what that aid was. I figured out why, because Nope spread out across the entire map. Yeah, it's no wonder he's not paying attention to other things, I don't blame him. So Lemon is still focusing on here after repelling the mid. So I, I get the V echelons bugged out here. I didn't realize this at the time until after my ambulance I pulled it back because the yellow player here is making a push. Uh, later on I managed to save them. They don't die, <laughs> which is a miracle in and of itself. Well, we've got all the fuel pushing the mid. Yellow player, because I guess he's scared now. <laughs> he's, uh, he's not making uh, any major moves. He's just digging in. He pays for this. All this bunker spam doesn't help out here because uh, we're completely mobile, we're completely fluid. We can just shift to wherever they are not at in strength. Well, Nope's getting up his infantry. I'm trying to, at this point, play more aggressive with the ambulance up front, but I run into all the machine guns here and once you get suppressed, I mean, there's nothing much you can do. You have to retreat, so it can't utilize the ambulance here. And once this flame half track comes about, you know, um, my AT, my early AT capabilities are lacking in this build for armor company. And nope spread out across the entire map, so it's uh, not a not wise to push the ambulance. And we don't really need to. I mean, we we have them on the back foot for the most part.
So the yellow player, he wakes up a little bit and uh, shifts his guys over to the middle here. That's where uh, we have a double team basically going on in the middle. Oops, regrouping. I'm leaving my guys idle, should just bring this back right now. This year is going to be a problem for a bit. So the line stabilized for the most part. They do get both seal now. The player on the right is the one we want to hit. At the time, we don't figure it out, uh, but there's an opening here, and uh, the other opening would be in the middle here. Somewhere here, a slight weak point. But as I said before, uh, in mounting an attack, uh, we don't do that well. It's only in counter attacking. And so we walk into some machine guns here. But because we have overwhelming force, well, we're just going all the way in. I do believe I now sent one engineer off to the right. I'm not too sure. Since we've got so much uh, firepower, it doesn't matter what he suppresses initially, we can just knock it out. The bunkers, on the other hand, are going to be a bit of a problem. But uh, I'm getting a steward out. Nope's getting his T70. Actually, he already has his T70 out. So all we need to worry about are these packs. And if we can maneuver around the packs, our light armor can go in from behind, knock out all the bunkers, and the infantry can move in. Get a couple of shots in. I think it reverses back in. Yeah, he's gone. Now the flak can check here. So the OKW fellow is pushed in, but he can generate enough momentum here because he's all alone now. Blue player is just sitting on the left side, so he's got no help from him, and yellow is still trying to save his uh, defensive position on the right flank. We have a forward structure under attack. into this with Kenwood over here. So what happens here is that I bring the AT gun up, but I can't get line of sight with the AT gun, it's got short. But you can just attack ground, because we already know where the position is, attack ground, you can knock out the bunker, no problem. This one machine gun here, it's only got one dude, so we can just rush him. Even though we get pinned, now we just wait till the suppression lifts, and they're all gone. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Now, yellow player goes for another flame half track. Oh. The enemy has destroyed one of our forward installations. So this is where I was trying to tell you, you know, nope, just go rush because he, we're close in with this pack gun. I've got all my infantry here to move in. Don't worry about it, just go win, knock him out. But uh, no comms, can't, can't bother typing because things are going too fast here. Uh, yeah, we repel, knock it out, and uh, he's hanging back, so we could have pushed this entire flank right here, basically.
So we have regained the right flank. Blue just sitting here watching his teammates die. I don't mind. A lot of blobbing going on. I don't think I saw that blob there. I think I assumed when I saw it there, it was coming this way, that he's maneuvered around now. But uh, thankfully, it basically becomes a pincer here. Um, nope. Well, we've got two MGs, so we set up a crossfire and he can't do anything about that. He just walks into a trap, basically. It's a trap that we didn't actually like intend, but... Uh, worked out either way. So yeah, I asked not to come over here because it's a bunker. I've got nothing on this flank to deal with that. Basically, I'm trying to focus down all of their AT guns. My priority, once we get into like the mid game, is always their anti-tank weapons. We knock them out and our light vehicles, and then later on when we get our medium and heavy armor in, uh, we get a bigger advantage, basically. S slight snowball effect. And I'm willing to risk my infantry to take out their anti-tank weapons. So the is still stuck. Basically once the uh, steward comes back, I'm gonna push them out. Slow retreat there, I'm just trying to maneuver everything else. So yeah, I'm pushing up the mid here. So while he is maneuvering here, he can't micro at this flank here that he's got units on, so he pays the price for that. Well, then, because this guy is real passive, Lemon just walks up with his squad going, there's nothing he can do about it. So at this point, I'm telling you, nope, you gotta get Katushas because these guys are just blobbing and since we've repelled them so far back, um, they're just gonna sit here with their support weapons, just like in our 2v2 game that we ran into. Cause that's the problem with armor companies that uh, you don't get to collide and indirect fire support, yeah, it's just a big, big problem. Probably I should start looking into the pack howitzer. But I don't think the pack harvester has like that much of a range. I'm not sure. Rolling out their armor now. At this point, I realize I've got 1k manpower to start building caches. You get just a lucky break here for the most part. Sure. Credit to Cyan play, he doesn't just sit in the middle. Once he sees opportunity, he just keeps on pushing to the front. The disconnect here is the blue player and the yellow player. 
It's probably where she could have done a lot better. I think uh, Lemon had been trying to tell us that, you know, this blue guy he doesn't know what he's doing. He should come over here and wipe him out. But uh, in the heat of battle, I didn't even see the messages. What I'm thinking here is that we just need to go back for the fuel. And fighting over the middle is not, not that important, but uh, all of our forces are here. They're here. Might as well have an engagement. By the time I type out right fuel, you know, Nope's gonna have to regroup his guys. Or maybe I'm regrouping my guys. That's something we need to work on. So here in the mid-game, things seem to die down. We weren't able to keep up our initiative looking back now. In my mind, it seemed to me that we had a much better game than what I'm looking at now. But the enemy seemed to have been able to recap both fuel points and hold on to it. Uh, I was still under the impression that we had a fuel advantage. It doesn't seem that the advantage is uh, that large. Actually, it might have like, stabilized now for the most part. That's what it looks like. But uh, we're gonna get it back. That's uh, all the manpower that I've floated and start spamming out caches. Lemon as well. He's also getting out his uh, caches as well. So instead of going for the right, because I can't coordinate with Nope, uh, I know that Lemon is just gonna stay on his flank and try to work it. So I come over and uh, see what we can figure out here. Finally get my Jackson out. Slightly late, but um, when you combine it with everything else, it doesn't really matter. Especially if the team game, you get support from a teammate. Works even better. So we know when my assault engineers went up, scouted out that machine gun, I'll smoke it off. I think at this point I tell Nope just hold mid, watch out for the flanks in the event that the yellow player does decide to make a move somehow. Ready to strife enemy troops. So now that we've defeated the uh, blue player here, the cyan player is coming in to make a move but he's all alone. So just like in my previous video where I talked about mismatches, the enemy is disoriented for the most part and I'm not entirely sure if they were playing as a team. Uh, maybe they might have caught a break there as well, they're not a team either, it's just a random group of guys. But um, yeah, we had a mismatch basically. We need to get the cutoff point, we reconnect the fuel. The entire flank has basically collapsed. Blue player has to reorganize, he barely has anything left. He's going for artillery and the... Uh, doesn't manage to get much mileage out of these things. This one proves to be a problem, but... Nope already has his Katusha out, so we can deal with this. And uh, I've got my... Uh, uh, Howard to Barrage here. Just come active. I'm gonna be using that a lot in this area. So we finally get into the rhythm here, we just push the left flank, forget going to the right. And uh, yeah, it's not doing alright. They don't recover from here on in. There's my Howard Zip Barrage here.
So the cyan player has managed to rebuild from the start, which is good. Oh, hit. So I lost quite a lot in the process. I think we completely forget about the cutoff point, but I mean, it doesn't matter at this point. It's, we've got all the units that we need, all the correct counters. And me and Lemon are basically double teaming here. Yellow player just sits on the right flank. He's not. He doesn't know what's going on. Got a massive push coming up now. I've overextended here. I needed to have screens in front, but by the time my infantry arrives, it's too late. So the AT gun gets picked off. The Shvir here is a slight problem, giving a lot of suppression. So I get caught out by a Panzer Wolf here, I believe. Yeah, yellow's got a Panzer Wolf. I think Nope knocked out the Panzerwerfer, he just rushed in with the T-70, very nice. Marking and targeting our vehicles now available. So yeah, this was important because I need Lemon's armor to go first, or not go first but just be in front of my Jacksons because he gets better range out of it, sight range. Couple of shots from that Hack 43. So we have enough units here to make the play, and we eventually do. Nope, Katusha's this area here, and then we push combined arms with uh, all our armor and the infantry, and uh, basically they can't can't do anything from it. There's the first drop, and that's it, that's the game. So, that's funny because it's the yellow guy who drops. And it's the yellow guy who basically has cost the game for the team because he sat out here on the right flank doing absolutely nothing while his two other teammates get triple teamed and absolutely slotted. That is very interesting. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I thought it was the, uh, the other fellow here that's been getting absolutely destroyed and dropped. But uh, he's the next one to drop. I mean, he's got nothing basically. And from here on, I was just slaughtering. Uh, I made a couple of misplays and losses, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. We've, we're facing one AI now. And actually, come to think of it, I think the AI does a better job than the player because, at least with the AI, they're gonna be aggressive and they're gonna be pushing points and whatnot. But yeah, we re mop it up after this, basically. So yeah, that's the game. So looking at the replay now, um, we didn't quite achieve the kind of effect that I thought we did in the game. But um, as we can see, we can gauge that if we do play like a very aggressive kind of blitz style, it, it probably can produce quite a lot of results. And here getting the double team on the right flank here on the yellow player, and then immediately shifting over, I mean, that, that worked out fine. I mean, we achieved everything that we needed to achieve when we're going in fast. Uh, the misplays, all the same problems for the most part. We lack reconnaissance, so we don't identify where the weak points are, who the weak players are. And when we do identify them, we can't communicate because everybody's doing so many things. Typing and chat is not, not, not practical at all. And when it does happen, I don't even realize that Lemon's typing any messages because it just shows up here on the left hand side of the screen 
and there's like massive things going on. I don't know what's uh, yeah, and uh, it's very hard to coordinate with uh, other players as well because most of the time, me and Nope for the most part, our synergy is next to non-existent. Uh, every time that I'm going to attack, he's regrouping. Whenever he's attacking, I'm regrouping. And if any point that we decide to make a play together, it's, it only works out when we only have like a handful of units that we're going to focus in on micro. And then we basically leave the rest of our armies to uh, sit back and uh, either they're... What I usually do, I try to keep the habit of uh, checking back to the ambulance and reinforcing the units. But they're basically out of the out of the play, basically, out of the game. Uh, but when we do like focus on one area together and micro a handful of units, we get a lot of things done. And in the previous video where Nope saves uh, Lemons Churchill, I mean, that's that's an example of Nope and somebody else just focusing microing on one area. And I mean, works out fine. But um, yeah, plenty of work to be done here. But uh, it was a good game. It was a very good game. Yep.